It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, no, you know my dad. Well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But if you want to see our visuals, you got to tap, tap into our YouTube channel. That's where you see all our visuals. And if membership is most important. Subscription is great, but membership is the most important thing. If you all lo love what we do and you want to support a brand, sign up for our membership. How you do so is under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section, you can see get to our link that says join our membership. Thank you in advance, and we love you. Man, hey, man, listen, man. We got a guy in here today. He don't need no introduction. This is his second time on the show. The first one was phenomenal. I know you guys are about to enjoy this, man. Boss man Brewster is in the building. Big reform. Big reform. We in the building, baby. Wow. Man, what's going on with you? Man, I'm alive. Pull it I'm alive. I'm free, so I'm blessed, and I'm winning. Speak right into it. Let me see something. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I want it to be clear. Man, I want you to be clear. There you go. We talking big reform business. We needs to be clear and That's accurate it. in the mic. Man, I just, like I said, the, the thing I, I love about you, man, is you never quit going. I'm going to jump right in. Man, uh, I seen you and Kiki went into the prison, and that touched me, man, mm -hmm. because I was like, man, you know, I just I just seen them all that white. You see the white, you know where it's at. You know what time it is. I don't know what kind of boots they wear, but they used to get them old boots. Them old boots was horrible. Yeah, they still hard but that's them state boots them black boots man but I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you man just to, 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 to see you know all the stuff that goes into what you know uh, one would do when they come in because I remember people coming in you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying like how did you even process being that you were locked up to be you know go back into the prison system how did you how did you find out what the process was going to be how did you do it uh did you do it while you was on parole could or did you have to wait till you were off parole uh -huh. give us the ins and outs of how that happened so i've never been on parole i discharged my complete sentence uh the big re the big reform movement is something that me and the conciliar we call them the jewel dropper i get into that a little later but that's something we came up with and we knew we wanted to impact the culture from the inside out. So I have several associates, friends, family members that's already on the inside. So that's my cheat sheet. I may I know what's going on on the inside because I communicate with these guys. So once they expose some of the importance of, hey, bro, we need to have some real rec yard sessions down here. We need some guys to come into the system that we identify with, that we relate to. That's when I knew the importance of we need to get to the to the rec yards. We need to get into the system. We need I, we need individuals to be able to identify success on the level that they at. That's real. Yes, sir. That's real. And so, I mean, the one thing I can say is if you've been outside of it and if you've been in and then you're going back in, you definitely have a recipe if you know how to stay out. How, what's the percentage of people who end up going back into prison? 76% of all inmates return back to prison within the first three years of being released. Wow. Yes, sir. 73%. 76. 76. Yes, sir. What you think about that? That's crazy. That's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a big, I mean, like. But why is that so? Um, a big reason it is lack of funds. Lack of funds. Individuals are committing crimes at an all-time high about the funds. So I know that if you broke, the possibility of you committing a crime is extremely high. Versus if you somebody that's getting a little paper, you got some bread coming in, your thought process is going to be different, your decision making is going to be different. An individual that has zero dollars versus a person that has four or five hundred dollars, the decision making is different. Wow. Well, then what happened to those people who um, used to be out here hustling and stuff like that, making a lot of money, come back home trying to do right, but because they can't get a job and stuff like that, they go right back to the streets because, right. you know, that's where they can make their money. Right. So that's bullshit, Miss Jamaica. When they say they can't get no job, you don't mm -hmm. want no job. It, it, I'm mind blown by the amount of individuals that come home from prison. In prison, it's something called the host squad, kitchen okay. workers. You're going to break your neck to go out here to go to the kitchen. It, as a matter of fact, when they call kitchen workers out, if they if they miss you, you're going to be talking like, go get the Sarge. Go get the lieutenant, man. Really? They ain't get me for work. But uh -uh. the moment you release back into society, you go to talking about what you ain't going to do. They ain't paying me enough. Bro, you was just working for free. 
How you go from working for free to where they finna give you ten, eleven dollars, and that's not enough? That's because of the mindset. That's because while you was incarcerated, you wasn't in there really getting your game up. You was watching General Hospital all day and betting on LeBron them. Mm. Wow. wow, I think that's that, that's something that you see a lot of people. They'll say a lot of things when they locked up. You know, they send uh -huh. a lot of letters home. They make a lot of promises to kids. Correct. And and you see this and. And I always ask, this is one of the questions I ask you, like, what's the, I mean, you help people on our side, but when you was locked up, what was the fastest you seen somebody do, just go out and come right back? Uh, I'll say about six months. Six months? I done seen dudes get out, six months, they be right back. They got the same TDC number. Send them right back to Send the same back unit? To the same unit and everything. Wow. That's because they wasn't properly per prepared upon being released. We are, uh, I know you've heard of the five P's. Yeah. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. If you sit inside that institution and you're not properly preparing yourself for society, that means once you get here, you're going to fall on your face and you'll be back. Wow. I got a question. So, because um, I don't know a lot about I just take from what people tell me. Uh-huh. Okay, so when you come in out, you go to the halfway house, right? Mm-hmm. In the halfway house, they have programs where they're supposed to help you get jobs. Uh huh. So they're supposed to help. So is that the only thing that they have that they give you to prepare you for? As far as jobs? Jobs, do they give you like a um, counseling session before you get out to make sure that you, you're okay to come right. back to society so, and so, stuff? So the judicial system has different programs. I work with RPD, the, Rehabil mm -hmm. the Rehabilitation Program Division. Right. I work with them. So we have many different programs that are in place to assist individuals. Now, granted, you have to put forth the effort. Exactly. You know, you if you sitting there waiting on, on, on us or you waiting on the state of Texas to do something for you, you're going to be waiting forever. But if you putting forth the effort to better yourself, you putting forth the effort to get the help you need, of course it's there. But in today's time, it's too many individuals who just sitting around like they entitled or feeling like we owe you something. Even after being in prison so, so long, they still feel like that. Man, you have individuals who are incarcerated. You have individuals that are free who know the rules, regulations, and policies of the prison facility and care more about the prison facility than they do about the success of themselves and their families in society. Mm. They can tell you everything that the system ain't doing, but can't tell you nothing about what they ain't doing. Wow. wow. I, I just, you know, and, and that's, that's something else, man. You know, um, how many people did you see? I know you get this a lot that came down that really was innocent, but they and, and they got out and they wasn't even a part of what had happened. Um, I've met a few guys. You see what I'm saying? I have met a few guys who were, you know, falsely incarcerated. Correct, and, correct. You know, so those those type of cases are are taking place in our system. And there is a, 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 a special organization that needs to be able to adapt to that. But when it comes to that big reform, I committed my crime. Yeah. I shot all four of them people. Damn. It, and it wasn't the first time. I tell people when I went to prison, that was the first time I got caught. Not the first time I had done shot somebody. Yeah. I committed my crime. So, you know, my attitude about prison may not be the same as someone who's been falsely incarcerated because you do have individuals that are falsely incarcerated. You know, uh, that's an unfortunate situation. That's something that do need to be identified and addressed. And uh, from what I'm seeing, we uh, have elevated as far as with the forensic science, technology, and DNA to be able to, you know, prove the innocence or whatnot. But as far as Brewster and that big reform movement, man, we locked in on changing lives in the culture, in the streets. Well, I'm talking to the homies that's really putting in that work. Yes. I, I ain't talking about the guys who falsely incarcerated. Yeah, yeah, and I see that, and you really connecting with these people as they come home, and you really giving, you know what I mean, giving them a chance if they want to take it. There you go. You said the key word. If yeah. they want to take it. If you want to take it. Because if you're looking for Brewster to, to turn your life around overnight, that's not what's going to happen. If you're looking for Brewster to do the work, that's not what's going to happen. But what is going to happen is Brewster going to expose to you that you can be successful at a high level. Wow. I'm going to expose that to you. I'm from the old school, man. We believe in putting in our own work. Let's talk about you taking, uh, I, I, I believe on when you took uh, Lil Kiki down there, it was the same prison that he had visited before he told me on here. Uh, so the first time, that was the very first, first prison. Time, yeah. I done took him to several, several since then. Them, yeah. But the very first prison that we went to, we was in the car, and Key was like, uh, where are we going? I said, we're going to go to Polanski Uni, man. I'm going to take you over here. He said, Polanski? 
He said, like, you for real? I said, yeah, what's up? He said, like, man, the first time I ever visited somebody in prison was at this unit, Polonsky unit. I said, oh, yeah, bad. So when I took him in there, you know, as a matter of fact, when he saw his partner, we had pretty much wrapped up everything we was doing. Dude just walked by talking about, look out, black boy. So when he turned around, you know, we was finna keep everybody walking. He was finna get your case. <laughs> he was finna go lock up because he was the turn. He was on some man. I ain't going nowhere. I see little Kiki. You know what I'm saying? That's what he was on. So when we turn around, I'm like, "What's up, Key?" Key like, "Oh no, that's bro." I'm looking at Key, looking at him, man. He hugged Kiki for about 20 minutes. Damn, man. He hugged Key, wouldn't let Key go. Cause he had, cause, cause they cause had a real knew, connection. Yeah, that's Key partner for real. They grew right. up together. Key, you know what I'm saying? Now I didn't know when we got to the unit, we didn't know that the dude was her. When Key saw him, it was a wrap. Key was just like, damn. They were both stuck in a, you know, in a trance, looking at each other. He hugged him for a good twenty minutes, man. Wow. I just, man, and and, and when you took him in there on the film that I seen. The, the the warden, the guards, all of them was embracing you guys in, uh -huh. a, in a way of respect, mm -hmm. you know, and, and really showing that they wanted to uh, let these guys who wanted to play part in seeing you guys and coming out and, and supporting what you're doing, they really seemed like they was into it, you know? Oh, man, let, let me make sure we send a big, big shout out to the rehabilitation program, division in the state of Texas, what they doing with the penal system is hands down unbelievable. Something that's unprecedented, something that's never taken place. Uh, yeah, we have to give them a very big shout out. They are really implementing real programs to assist individuals like myself to becoming better people. Now, keep in mind, this ain't the Hilton Hotel. It is prison. So, you know, nothing is mandatory, you know. This is all about you, about self. The opportunity is there. Now, what you do with the opportunity, that's on you, bro. Wow. And and just, you got to you gotta think, man. A lot of those guys, you know, um, are lifers. A lot of them got double life sentences. Mm -hmm. uh, never come home, you know. Mm -hmm. And the only thing, the only glimmer of hope they see is in you guys when you go in there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something people don't think about a lot. You know what I mean? That some of those guys stand, you know, they, they, they may not be trying to change to come home. They just changing just because they need to change. Uh, and that be really my message when I'm dealing with lifers, individuals that got a significant amount of time. It's not even really about whether you are whether you free or locked up as much as it's about the man you are, mm -hmm. the man you becoming, your legacy. What If it's all said and done, what you want to leave behind? Mm -hmm. Because as long as God is waking you up every day, you got the opportunity to do something great. May that be affect somebody else's life. May that be helping somebody else do something. It's a It's a... Opportunity you have to do something positive because if you're dead, it's over with. Man, I, I, got, I was going to ask about the Dak Prescott. While but I before you get prison. on to that, well, before you get on to that, I, I'm still in prison. But um, I read an article once, and tell me if this how how can an inmate get to be able to do this if this is true? Because I saw it in an article, and there was an inmate who um, you know y'all go to school and stuff, mm -hmm. get your degrees. This person actually got a doctor degree, as mm -hmm. in like medical doctor. Do they? I so, don't hear that a lot, though. Right, so Pete, you were, some of the smartest men in the world are incarcerated. Mm -hmm. Some of the most skillful, talented individuals are incarcerated. So him being able to get that degree. That medical I'm, degree. Yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised by that at all. I know scholars that are incarcerated. I'm talking about professional professors and you know, some of the best hidden talent and potential we have are with men and women that are incarcerated behind the walls. Okay, but they said that he got it, but my next thought is, okay, so now when he gets out of prison, and yes, you are a um, licensed doctor, you can do surgery, whatever, mm -hmm. how hard would it be for that um, person with that record to come out and start his own practice and actually start, you know, moving So forward. I'm not familiar with the medical industry in that field to mm -hmm. be able to speak on it, but I would like to believe that if you are licensed and you're able to build a, a, a platform and mm -hmm. get you some clients going, that you good to go. It's like cutting her. Once okay. you go to, you know, getting that clientele up, you know, hey, it's up. 
Man, uh, so I wanted to go back to bringing, you know, you brought Kiki in, and, and you've and you done some work with Dak Prescott. Yeah, Dak, that's my boy. I got major love for Dak Prescott. Big shout out to my boy Dak. Wow, like what was it like dealing with him, and how did you even connect to him to, you know, uh, re-enter the prison system? With uh, so I work with a guy named Damon West, okay. and um, Damon and Dak, they pretty cool, and um, they told me, hey, man, we're going to bring Dak to the prisons. We want you to give him a tour. And I kind of laughed it off. I'm like, man, Dak ain't coming to no, you know, penitentiary. This is the, we talking about the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys? They like, yeah. So we get the Dak pulled up. Blew my mind. Got out the car. I'm like, damn, that's Dak? I was like, I went over, hollered at him, what's up, bro? He was like, what's up? I'm like, man, you finna go into prison and go chill? He was like, yeah. I had a whole nother fine respect for him at that of moment. Of course. The fact that the man stopped what he was doing, man, bro, I ain't got to come away. And we ain't like in Dallas. We way in Huntsville. That's two hours away. Yeah. Bro came out there, went into the prison, toured the facility, came into the chapel. He spoke. He kicked it with the homies. I'm talking about, I messed with that. Wow. Yeah. And I, did, I know they, they, they had to love that, bro. Because there's people in the oh, free world man. that's not even getting to see Dak. These niggas, these, these niggas right here is oh, the, the unit, the unit. Niggas man, the unit. The unit went into an uproar. And the guards. What well, everybody went crazy. <laughs> said, I told Dak, I said, listen, the, them, them Dallas Cowboys, man, they love that, them. That, it's a, that's a serious situation in the penal institution in Texas. That's real. Listen to me. In the state of Texas, in that prison system, the Dallas Cowboys. Is very serious. He can get your ass whooped. Oh, it definitely. You you just, I, I explained that to Dak. You hear me? Yeah. He laughed. He like you for real, man. Listen, I'm finna. You, we finna go in this prison. You need to understand. Some people might say a little something crazy or whatnot. Yeah, yeah, because they for real about them cowboys. And, and, and the ones who ain't is for real, not about them cowboys. Yeah, you got Houston in there and in Dallas. That's a whole situation. Listen, man. Them Houston Texans, the Texans, and them Dallas Cowboys. It's a problem in there. That's a problem inside of our penal institution. <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> Several Love. things will take place behind the Cowboys <laughs> in them Texas in the state of Texas, man. <laughs> <laughs> they serious about it. Do you hear me? So how long did he stay down there with you? All day or just yeah, half the day? He chilled about two, three hours with two us. Two or three hours. Yeah, he came down, toured the facility. He uh, Actually, he helped graduate. It's a program called The Change Agent. Wow. And he helped uh, graduate some of the guys. He was the keynote speaker. Man, Dak was very down to earth. How much do you think that changed the inmate's life that he did help, the ones that's coming home? Did you think, do you think it spilled hope on them? Um, not only do I know what he done, you know, place, you know, hope in them guys, it's what it done for me. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? Just to be able to see, like, that's the sweets for me. People always hear me from the streets to the suites. And, you know, when I'm saying that, they'll think that I'm talking about some money. I'm talking about experiences. You know, that was an experience for me that I'll never be able to forget. I consider that the suites being able to rock with, you know, Dak Prescott. This is the uh, Dallas Cowboys starting quarterback. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So to know that changing your life will put you in this kind of position, it's like, damn, I'm just doing right and. You know, doing what I'm supposed to do as a, as a man, as a better person, it'll create opportunities like this where you kicking it with people like that. Man. Where you kicking it with people like Lil' Kiki. Mm. You kicking it with Donk, Lady J, Bebe. Like, you know, to, to be to come from sitting in a cell in your boxes to being able to go to Roof Chris with Lil' Kiki, man, that's the sweets. That's definitely the sweets. <laughs> that's the sweets. A lot of niggas in, in the free world ain't doing that. <laughs> That's a lot the, of these free world niggas man, that got know, clean records. They ain't got man, nothing on their record. They is not the seeing me, man. They is not seeing baby. They is not seeing That's the either. sweets for me, man, being able to do things like that. So how did you and Bebe link up? It, it, was it a thing where he went down there or he, had, yeah. went, he went down Donald there? Donald took Bebe to the prisons like two or three different times. Okay. So me and Bebe got a unique relationship. You know, we met and uh, it wasn't under the best terms and conditions. It was a miscommunication between me and Bebe. But as you would go by and we would link back up man we was able to both see that you know it was more about baby thought my passion was about aggression you know and I, and I can be a little aggressive but that aggression is just my passion man I really want to rock the culture I want the homies to see man changing your life and doing right can get you this too bro mm -hmm, so when mm -hmm. I bumped into him the first time I was a little rough around the edges but as time would pass man baby hit me man hey man let's do it 
Whatever, whenever you need me to go into one of your the, these prisons, man, I want to go in there with you, man. I'm not coming in there as Bebe. I'm coming in there as a spectator, man. I want to simply see the work that you're doing, and I want to simply do whatever I can to uplift and continue to promote what you're doing. Bebe is somebody who did come in, and, and when I say he came in, he didn't come in with no ill intentions or with the intentions of trying to, you know, let it be about Bebe. He came in with the intentions that this is about the big reform movement, and I'm here to support that. Wow. Yeah, Bebe stand up. I met him now. I, I, I had never met Bebe till we was at the comedy mm -hmm. show. Uh -huh. And that was my first time meeting him. People don't realize how we just kind of stay in our own lane, you mm -hmm. know, because we've been at this store for 18 years. And they'd be like, you know this person? Because everybody knowing you when you go out of state. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, no, I never met him. So until I had went to, it was Bubba Dub show or whose show was it? It might have been. Um, I think it was Bubba Dub. Was it Bubba Dub show? It was one of them shows, and I met him. He seemed like a stand up guy. You know what uh, I mean? I talked with him, gave like him Like I say, I can't say, man, baby, somebody I can get on the line. Hey, baby, we trying to get X, Y, and Z done. If he can help you and facilitate it, then he going to do his part. Do it. That's you know good, what I'm saying? Yeah. That's good. And and um, the thing is, man, the way that your passion is, I enjoy it. I respect it because I'm I real. Appreciate it. I'm a real. I, I like it because it's just something when you know. You've been around all, you've been locked up. You've been around all type of characters. Yes, sir. You done seen everybody. I done seen it all, baby. <laughs> I can lace you up and read you in about five real, minutes. Real quick. Quickly. Real quick. And and I think that's dope because it helps you even out here in the free world, you know, Correct. because you, people don't realize you have that time to study people's character. Correct. And so you dominating when it comes down to seeing things, you can see things coming a mile away in slow motion. It's that, funny. It's funny that you say that. I often tell the guys that's incarcerated. I don't see prison as a, as the state penitentiary. You hear me? I see it as an institution where you're able to learn human behavior, psychology, sociology, you know, you're going to learn these things at a high level. You may live on a dorm with a hundred guys. That's a hundred different personalities, a right. hundred different walks of life, a hundred different thought patterns. So you're going to learn that. I was in prison almost 14 years. Wow. So when I come out here, I just need to have a five minute conversation with you. I got you all, you know. It, <laughs> Spiced and yeah, I just need to have a quick little conversation with you. And then I better tell you, look, I eat. That ain't it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. And it, it <laughs> it's so funny because the only thing I think about when you're saying that is that I wish that more men would be able to have something like that where women are concerned because they don't ever understand women. And you understand. That's interesting. <laughs> I just told a dude, man, you know, living with your woman and living with your Sally, them two totally different things. Wow. <laughs> it was, now that you say that, it was, I think it was Meek Mills they was messing with about that. He said that your, when your Sally leave, it's like your woman leaving. Yeah, nah. <laughs> your selling, your selling leaving and your that's woman right. leaving them two different that's right. That's what he said. It was like that, bro. Well, he may be insinuating from the standpoint you may develop a, a, a relationship? relationship with your selling. Mm -hmm. If y'all been selling two years or a year and y'all done develop that, you know, personal relationship and they come tell you to pack up, you gonna move, you gonna be kind of like, ah, oh, yeah. they taking my boy. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, yeah. But yeah, in the know. world, in baby leaving that house, oh, uh, man. That's a whole different ball game, man. <laughs> Oh, oh, wait a minute. That's, oh, a, okay. ooh, that's another high. You, oh, it's going to be it's gonna be bad. What? Ain't nobody cooking. Ain't nobody cleaning. It's ain't quiet. no clothes getting wet. Ain't no rumping. It's quiet. Go, yeah. It's better if she took the kids. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> ain't none of that going on. If she took them kids, boy, that's a wrap. So I got to jump on something else that really struck a nerve with me, man, because I had hit, uh, I had uh, kind of hit Honey Kong Braze up when he came home, mm -hmm. and he was gone before. I could even lock in with him the way I needed to. Um, um, what did you think about him getting out in the way that he ended up just going right back like right. that? Um, I ain't gonna lie to you. I thought he was a clown. Really? Just to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, anyone who has his type of talent, anyone who has his connections, anyone that's in, you know, in his position to be able to better themselves and you self-sabotage yourself, I mean, uh, it's a reflection of the way you spent your time. Wow. You know, you got Birdman in the hood chilling. I said you got Birdman in, in, in your neighborhood chilling. Me getting into some trouble would have been the farthest thing from my mind. I'm fresh out of prison. So, and then it's also a, a reflection of the individual that you have around you that's helping you make your decisions, the people that are influencing you. Everyone is influenced from somewhere, some way, somehow. So whoever it is that's influencing you, obviously they, they doing a piss poor job, sir. Yeah. It's no it's no reason for someone to have your potential, your talent, your skill set, your connections, your relationship, yet 
it's being sit in prison. Like, that's being buried alive. Yeah, buried so, you know, alive. when people, when you're just asking me about the guy, I don't personally know him, just on the outside looking in. Uh, man, uh, he's not even someone that I'd be looking to associate with, but I would be trying, like, why he incarcerated now? If you can get word to him, let him know. Lock in with the big reform movement. We can begin to reform his mentality so that when he get here, he can be successful. So that, one of the guys that you guys uh, work with, that's one one of the furthest things from their mind is just putting themselves in bad situations when they come home. Um, one of the number one things we work on with the guys is understanding your thought patterns. Your thoughts is what leads to your actions. When you walk back into society, being around constructive, positive individuals, sound individuals is what you need. You don't need it to come home, especially for someone like him who's in the entertainment industry. You know, obviously he got a little money, a little clout, cool. He needs real people around him who, who genuinely love him, genuinely care about him, and they're not making a decision based off of what they're going to personally gain from this situation. They're making a decision based off of, man, honey, come, I want to see you be the best you, bro. I don't want to see you crash and burn. Let Those are the type of individuals he need around Let him. Let me ask you this. If you was a friend of him, hypothetically, um, and he came home and he jumped on the internet and did some of the things that he mm -hmm. done, what would have been something that you would have tried to Tell him uh, to, to, you know, get him at bay. Right, so if you're my partner, we got a real relationship, I'm going to just walk up and take the phone. Hey, you lost your motherfucking mind? The hell is wrong with you, man? We ain't moving like that. You the bag. We not doing none of that, bro. You is tripping. You need to get to the studio, and you need to be getting them raps in. That's yeah. what you need to be doing. Obviously, you're not successful at what you're doing. You keep going to prison. Anyone that's keep going to prison, people keep dying, obviously you're not successful in this industry. So we need to reroute you. When I say reroute you, meaning we need to go about this a different way, bro. Your way didn't work. Wow, I think that's dope that you, you know, because that's, that's what he needed to hear. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, like I say, when you got individuals that's around you looking for their own personal gain, it's going to be hard for them to tell you the truth. They looking for you to do something for them versus somebody like me. I got my own. Alleg I don't need nothing from you. Allegedly, the guys that was with him, you know, basically what some of the security guys wasn't, didn't have all his stuff right to be carrying firearms and some stuff. So, like so, that. so, so, so if I'm someone of his, uh, of his stature How do you in his position, yeah. yeah, I'm going to have someone that, that can have a firearm. You're going to check, make sure that they are qualified. Man, I got them. You telling me we don't know nobody that's, that's qualified to carry a firearm? I'm a convicted felon. I'm not going to have it. So whoever's in this vehicle is going to be legal and qualified to be able to carry that firearm. Wow. And I think that's important. But do you think that some people are still stuck in their um, certain type of mentality where they're not even like thinking right. about that? Uh huh. So you being stuck in your mentality would be the reason why you're sitting in prison. Exactly. Uh, I would advise individuals that are looking to strive to become better men that's looking to strive to reach a certain level of success, you know, you're trying to do these unbelievable things, understand the importance of security. Uh, my homeboy around the corner that I grew up with is not security. For the amount of money you guys are playing with, it ain't nothing to give uh, security, you know, three, four thousand dollars for the month or whatever just to be able to, and really it's about, I just want you to have that firearm with you. You legal and I want you to have that firearm. Because worst case scenario, if it get too extensive, you know, obviously I'm a, you know, step up for myself. And then some people, would some people, I'm just, scenario, um, scenarios just keep coming to my head or thinking about what people might be thinking, why they could possibly not get that. Some men be feeling like, because they're so street, they mm -hmm. feel like, I can't trust the security because security can be bought off. Security Correct. can whatever. That's right. why I'm, I'm not going to have somebody around that I really don't trust or know. Mm -hmm. So this one thing I know about, if you so street, then you would understand the logistics of security, of the way you're moving and the way you're doing your thing. It's very important that if I'm a, high, I'm a big time entertainer, I got all this beef, all this drama or whatnot, I'm going to I'm gonna have some people around me that it's legal for them to have the fire on. The quickest way to get Keijan Bruce out the equation is just to, hey, he got a gun in the car. Y'all need to pull him over. Mm. They pull the car over. It's a weapon in here. Everybody saying it ain't theirs. I'm a convicted felon. Obviously, I'm going to jail. Mm. That happens a lot. It ain't going to happen with Keijan. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen with Keith and Bruce. Cause it definitely happens a lot with guys ending up with different security guys who say it ain't mine. It, it's it, gonna be your. It, it has to be yours. That's the only way you're gonna be in this vehicle. I'm a convicted felon. We know Keith not taking the case. And you don't go in the vehicles with people that you don't really. 
know if they have a gun on them. I got my own key. Where my keys to my truck? <laughs> I got my own vehicle. Excuse me, let me see that. So I got my own vehicle. So in the event there's something taking place that I'm not in agreement with, I just go hit that. Doop, doop. Hit that button. <laughs> because do you always know if somebody actually has something on them? You don't know. Um, you you don't. not go search them all the time. It's Correct. But I, think, I will say this. Individuals know the people they surrounded by. You know, you are the one, you the head of this. You the one that's creating the team. You the mastermind behind this. So anything that, if we succeed, it's your fault. But if we fail, that's also your fault. So the fact that we incarcerated or the fact that we dead, that falls on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. it, it can't just fall on your shoulders when we rocking out sold out arenas and doing things like that. You know, I'm on Boss Talk doing big videos and all that. All that fall on your hands. But then when somebody done got killed or somebody done got locked up, a tragic situation done took place, you didn't have nothing to do with it. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I look at... Um like you, you one of those guys that I, I could talk to about different guys that, that go back. You know, when I had a uh, hot boy Wes on here, he told me he was 27 years old and he had did 11 years in prison. Mm -hmm. He did. It started at, at the youth center. Now he's had to go back and do, I think it was a, was it a 15 or 14 years? 15 year years. You know what I mean? Like, like, what do you think about just the one who can't figure it out, but just keep going back and into talented the out this world and talented right. signing the uh, Gucci man. And I still, you know, rock with him or text or, 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 or put something up, try to figure out ways to link with him. Uh, Cause I ain't, you know, I, I definitely reach out, but what do you think about just his situation and success that he faced? Um, he's another one. It's unfortunate for me to be saying things like no, this. No, I have to ask but, because right. you know about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's just unfortunate for the response I have. Because <laughs> <laughs> my response is the same thing for him. You know, you're not sincere, sincere nor are you serious about being successful. You're an individual with unbelievable talent, unbelievable skills, unbelievable relationship connections, but you choose to try to be a street guy. I just don't respect that. The object of the game is to get out the streets, not to continue to go to the streets. If I'm signing the Gucci man, I need to be where Gucci at. Guap, we need to get to the studio. You got a show this week? Let me open up for you. You know, I'm not going to be in the trap sitting down chilling, getting high. Prioritizing, um, prioritizing your career understanding the opportunity that you have, those things are important. Because, you know, they'll be looking at it like, I'm signed to 1017, man, that ain't shit ain't nothing. Boy, you signed to something that can change your life. You, you hear me? You, you have a, this man has given you an opportunity to change your life and do something great with it. Now, what you choose to do with it, well, we watch what you did. Obviously, you know, you fun with the ball, but... You know, um, it's unfortunate. I it's really real don't have. I don't really have sympathy in my heart towards uh, individuals who get out of prison. You just did X amount of years. You got X amount of homeboys that's already did X amount of homeboys that's already in prison. Yet you come right home and you continue the same thing. They told me that if you keep doing the same thing, same looking result. for a different result, insanity. It's insanity. So I don't really be having no sympathy or like oh, I'm hurting. I be like, nah, man. You need to uh, when you get to prison, you need to get enrolled into some classes so you can learn about your thinking patterns, so you can better develop yourself. You worth millions of dollars, but you would rather sit in prison. So obviously, we know you got a mental condition. Wow. I do agree with that. Um, yeah. Um, the mental, understanding your mental thought yes. process, understanding why you think the way how you are, because you could have sat down and, you know, sobered up and whatever, been clean, good. I'm going to come out here, do everything good. And when you come out here, you try to do all that, even got signed with whatever. But I also feel that if you don't move from the environment that you were in whenever you got caught up, Mm -hmm. It can also pull you right back into that environment and not everybody have a strong mental state where they don't, you know, succumb back to their environment. They just like, you know, all the homeboys, they end up hanging out, doing the same stuff and I'm getting caught up back in the same stuff. So that's one of the reasons why I try to grab them why they in such a vulnerable state as far as being incarcerated. Mm -hmm. See, when you're incarcerated, you're very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So that's th that's my moment and my opportunity to be able to dig into you. So, you know, once you're back into society, you know, you kind of, you back on your feet. Mm -hmm. You got a few dollars, you know, oh, got a few fans, people. Right. So it's hard for you to kind of, you know, process the information. But see, if I give it to you while you're sitting in that cell, yearning for a letter, praying for a visit, hoping and praying that you get out, the, the information and the game that I'm giving you, it's gonna, you're going to be more receptive to it. 
Yeah, and and the one thing I, I notice about you, you you really 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 take the reform to another level. You know, um, Jim Jones, you uh, Jim Jones. Um, I, some I was gonna ask you D one, which he been on the show. Uh -huh. um, Jim Jones was called out by D one when he went to a uh, to a sway, and it was about uh, the fact of that they've since then resolved their issues mm -hmm. with it. But he called him out on just the lyrics they say in the song versus the work you know that they're uh, that that. <laughs> How are we influencing the youth is pretty much what he was really stemming on. All right? Like, mm -hmm. what are you doing to help when you're telling them one thing and then they go out here and live out their dreams through your lyrics? Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Do you think that's a that real thing? No or do you, so, and I, I mean, it's just your opinion. Right. So let me say this. Let me first say this about Jim Jones. Uh, he's one of the very first entertainers to ever fully support the big reform movement. Wow. There have been numerous of times that I've called Jim Jones on the phone and told Jim, look, bro, I got a, uh, two or three partners. They just come home from prison. They ain't never left outside the city of Dallas, man. I want to bring them to New York and show them the big app and show them how big the world is. Jim Jones' response, man, I'm waiting on you, man. Let me know when you land and uh, I'll have somebody come get you. Wow. So uh, let, I want to make sure that I state that publicly, that Jim Jones is one of the very first entertainers to ever fully support the big reform movement. I have taken individuals. So one of my methods with the big reform movement is about exposure. So I be wanting to expose guys to New York, Atlanta, Mississippi, Tennessee. You know, we got guys who ain't never left outside their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Jim Jones, every time I've reached out to him and, and told him that, man, I'm going to be in New York. I want to do X, Y, and Z. His response has always been, come on, let me, bro. I got you. Anything I can do to assist you, let me know. I got you. So when it concerns uh, uh, something like what D1 is saying as far as the lyrics, I respect that because the lyrics they do entice our youth or whatnot. But I also will say this. We putting too much goddamn responsibility on the entertainers. What happened to the mama and the daddy? Wow. You know, we, we looking for the teachers to raise the school, to, to raise the kids in the school. Well, it's the teacher's job to teach the child, not teach the child how to be respectful. Yes, sir, no, sir, or sit down. And, you know, you want the teacher to be the mom and the daddy. Well, you the mom and the daddy. So that's the same thing I feel with the rap. You know, they are rappers. They do have influence. So, yeah, they should be conscious of what they saying and whatnot. And they are held to a certain amount of responsibility. But if I'm going to be mad at Jim, I know I'm super mad at the mama and the daddy. How you gonna be more mad at Jim than you is the mama and the daddy? You more mad at the entertainer than you is the family. That's a problem. Wow. That's a major problem. That's real. What you said is real. You answered the hell out that. That's, that's, that's one thing I can say is I know, I, I know you're telling the truth because it starts at the home. If, all I'm simply saying is, you know, you can't be mad at Cardi B for how she is. I, I, I watched this one time. Cardi B song or something came on while her daughter was around. And Cardi B hair up and cut the song off. And she received backlash for that. I'm trying to understand. Uh, Cardi B don't want her daughter listening to this. So if you got your child listening to Cardi B, who fault is that? Cardi's? Cardi make music for entertainers. She's an entertainer. She's her her job is to sell the record, to sell the song. So if she can talk about giving your head and shaking that ass and turning around, whatever she needs to do to get the song, so is what she's supposed to do. Obviously, she's a very responsible mother because she cut that goddamn music out when her daughter was standing there. Real talk. But how many kids? A lot of times, a lot of kids don't listen to music around their parents. Correct. So a lot of parents don't know what their kids listen to. Correct. You know what I mean? So a lot of times, sometimes, you know, raising children, for me personally, as I got older, before I was react, I have to stop and think back. I'm like, okay, what did I do when I was that age? You know, so you don't blow up so much on so your you don't child. Go, but let me ask you this, though. You're not holding Cardi B responsible for how your daughter is in life, is you? No. So when you're not holding Cardi B responsible for if you catch your daughter out there shaking her ass, that ain't Cardi B mm -hmm. fault, is? That's that's the only thing that I'm trying to convey to individuals. Mm -hmm. we, we, we're we're placing the responsibility on the entertainer to raise your child, right? You know, so I, I can't put the responsibility on Cardi B, Jim Jones, Meek Mills, Lil Kiki. They are entertainers. Their their talent and their craft is art with their words. That, that's that's how they express themselves or whatnot. 
as far as my child, I want my child to have the ability of knowing right and wrong, sound decision making. Like, I'm not depending on Cardi B to make sure that my daughter know, baby, you ain't got no business out shaking your ass. That clown, he just trying to play you because he wants you to give him some. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't expect Cardi, that's not her job, that's my job. All I'm saying as far as, you know, in this situation that we are placing way too much responsibility on entertainers and athletes to raise our kids because really what you saying is that you too lazy to get up off your ass and raise your own child. You depending on the internet to do it. But at the same time though, I think the main thing from all of that is to teach your child, be careful of what you feed your soul with because the more you digest all of this so-called so music, because some people digest all this music more than they digest knowledge. So I'm gonna ask you this once again. As an adult, it's I'm not, not the speaking. entertainer's fault for that. that that's, that's all I'm saying because I hear this so much. These mm -hmm. kids growing up, I control what my daughter listen to at my house. I run the house. My daughter don't run nothing. Do you know everything that she listened to? How no, old is your daughter? So my daughter is just three. Oh. But I'm saying even if she's 15, 16, obviously I can't control everything right. my daughter listening to, what she's watching, you know. That's why I'm saying inside the house amongst me and her mother, it's our job to instill morals, values, right. principles, make sure she understands right from wrong and allow her to make sound, solid decisions. Exactly. Now she gonna mess up. Mm -hmm. She gonna make some mistakes or whatnot. But we can't be saying that uh, my daughter out here shaking her ass because of Cardi B. No, my daughter out here shaking her ass because she fast and she trying to be accepted by her little homegirl and, and she listening to the music and the music is just what's enticing her to go and do it. Right. You know, I'm not going to hold Cardi B responsible for that. I'm going to be asking her mama, why do my daughter think it's cool to be shaking her ass like that? Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. I do hold entertainers to a certain, to a certain, you know, you are an entertainer. You got influence over millions of people. You want to be more conscious of what you're putting out. But I can't solely put that on their shoulders. Yeah, And also, they, they see their friends at their age doing it as well. I think that's more of a influence than anything else when they see their friends doing stuff Correct. that they want to also do. That's it why it's so important for me. I want my daughter, I, I want to teach my daughter, hey, babe, I want you to be able to think for yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to see your homegirl doing something that you want to do. I want you to do it because that's what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Wow. Did you or LD, who got out first? I want to say I, I got out before mm -hmm. LD because I've been home okay. 10 years. LD ain't been home oh, 10 yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. I asked you that for a reason. Um, when LD came out, he did crowns. He started crowning crazy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he did his first day. I love that's probably the best song for me he got his first day out, period. I'm telling you that now. He knows this. But. I've seen some guys come home and some of the things that they put out music wise, we talking about quality. Um, I seen uh, Go Yayo, yeah Yo, Twisted Black. Um, what are you thinking about the music that you're hearing from uh, them, from Twisted Black? Uh, so I'm loving the music that I'm hearing from Twisted Black. You can obviously tell that he was incarcerated. You can hear the wisdom. You can hear the knowledge. You can hear the game. You 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 can hear it. You can you can see it. You can hear it. You can feel it in the music. As far as our other buddy uh Go Yayo, I don't know the homie, but I am deeply saddened and disappointed by the way he chose to come home. Um, obviously he's super popular. He has a beautiful platform, and that was cool. You know, I was actually anticipating it because everybody talks I think about everybody it. Everybody was just kind of I I listened to some. Some of his uh, freestyles. I hadn't listened to none of the music. So I've you know. listened to the music. Okay. And the music I've listened to, I'm sadly disappointed. Um, you do all this time in prison only to come home talking about four e slack slime this that that. And I'm like, where's the game? Where's the knowledge? Uh, you someone who has real influence on the streets. Which way is you leading the homies? We got to stop giving the little homies bad game. We have to stop. Is you checking this out? Stop giving the little homies bad game. That's the homie. music that I'm listening to from these individuals, that's bad game you giving the homie. You ain't telling the homie how to be productive, how to be successful. I'm listening to the music. I'm listening to the lyrics. Like I say, I was anticipating it because I've heard so much about the young man. You know, he this, he that. You know, cool. Let me hear it. You know, I'm hearing it. I'm like... This what y'all talking about? Wow. Did this this uh okay? I mean, maybe I'm out. I, maybe this is just a different generation for me. But yeah. I wasn't impressed. I wasn't. I didn't see the hype. Wow. What what? And, and I go back to uh, even Honeycomb Brazen and and what's the other cat down there in Atlanta that came home? He came home, man. I 
Oh, uh, fact, uh, he was this. It, like man, they said, it, it, he said something. He would never do a song with CMG because uh, with dog. I mean, because of what happened to dog. Damn, what's home and night? Man, that's sad. In Atlanta. Oh. That, that's sad, bro. He been quiet too. I ain't really just seen nothing pop Damn, back up with Rollo. 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 That's his name. He been quiet, but oh. I, I heard that one one little old video. Then I, I kind of didn't right. Uh, he's another one. I was disappointed. Wow. Uh, the fact that you come home from prison, you are who you are, obviously, super popular, great platform. You've built that, kudos, you know, whatever. But you come home and make a public statement, I'd never do a song with such and such because of this, that. Homie, you just come home from prison. How do you walk out of prison and with within 24 hours you be you begin to create this type of animosity and this beef? I'm like, I just wasn't feeling the... Uh, you know, that's just my personal opinion. I look at it from the standpoint, homie, you supposed to be this big homie. You supposed to be this 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 guy. I don't see it. You know, what I saw was some ignorant foolishness. Like, I would have never revealed my hand to the public like that, only for the blogs to be able to go back and he into it with them and this and this and that. Like, you fresh out of prison, homie. You know, uh, the way you come on from prison speaks volumes about the direction in which you're going. Obviously, this is the entertainment industry, so maybe a lot of it is entertainment because I also know homie is, is Muslim. You know, and uh, anyone that's Muslim, Islam, uh, I know he has a certain level of discipline. He has a certain level of respect. He has a certain level of way of conducting himself. So I know that he knows better. You mm, know, mm. that's the thing for me. Do you, you from Oak Cliff? Born and raised. Trap Boy Freddy. I swear. He just, uh, he he went in and did, I seen a picture pop up of him the other, uh, maybe uh -huh. yesterday. Um, what do you hope to see from him coming home? Uh, man, I'm hoping to see Freddie come home uh, way more, way, way more effective and efficient in what he do. Okay. Obviously, he a superstar. Obviously, he got platform. All, of, all these things, the kudos, you know, we can't take nothing from him as far as that go. But as far as when he walk out of prison, I, I'm expecting to see a different Freddie. I'm expecting to see the big homie. I'm expecting to see some knowledge, some wisdom, some games, some insight. I'm expecting to see something outside of uh, slide, ride, drill. Like, I mean, that's 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 all you got in the playbook. Wow, I I, I like the way you 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 know you break down the factor because that's what you're about reform. That's why. And I'm pushing reform. That's I want individuals to see the skills that you use to thrive in the streets. The skills that you use to thrive on the rec yards, you can take those same school, those those same skills and thrive in society doing right. Don't let these clowns lie to you how you're thinking we got to do wrong. It ain't like that, Mo. This 2024, we got options, baby. Wow. We, we have options. We can get paid without committing no crime, and we're going to keep the drip. <laughs> and we're going to keep the drip. We're going to talk. I want to talk about uh, just the... Uh, you know, uh, you, you we talked about a few guys that went and came back. Yeah, let me get that. You cup. want more? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I can get another. Yeah, yeah. Come on now. Turn me up, D. <laughs> let me get loose, so, D. So we 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 talked about a, a, a lot of guys that really was kind of have making bonehead decisions. Uh, some of them was doing. Some of them you you expect some things from. We see when Gucci came home. What did you think about him? Because he hadn't been back. He married. He got mm -hmm. two kids now. Um, let, I want to talk on that side of it. And he's been thriving. Right. So um, I was actually never a Gucci Man fan. Uh, when Gucci Man came out, I was incarcerated. When I came home, I was trying to listen to his music. I couldn't really get a feel for him. Okay. But when he came home from prison, and I saw the way he came home and the way he now. was moving, I instantly became a fan. Anyone that can do a 360 turn around degree chain is evidence that see Gucci, he got real game. He got real knowledge, real insight. That's what you call game right there. The way he came home and transitioned and got out the way and got to the money and built something solid around himself, and that's real game right there. So I'm not necessarily a fan of the music, but I am a fan of the man that he's became. Yeah, because he definitely, he lost weight. He he stay in the gym. He stay, he stay doing his business, taking it, and he got married. Correct. So those are some diamonds, right? Some things that men strive to do to get that solid foundation you know what I'm saying yes, sir. so man like you you are one of those guys like I say again man you just you thriving you doing everything you can to make sure you stay pushing that big reform <laughs> you know what I'm saying you I, I've heard a couple of cases it was a lady I don't know her name but she was uh she they had came up 
real hard on the, on the internet. I think you know her. She supposed allegedly she had made a hundred million dollars. It was people talking about her trucking skills and and saying that that was like it was cap, big cap. Right. They say it was big cap. Say she right. didn't make that kind of money. Right. And, and and I'm just trying to see, can you make that kind of money in the trucking business the way she explained it? Right. So let me let, let, let me say this. Let, this my camera. That's it. Let me say this. Everybody's been wanting to know Keys and Bruce's opinion about Kiara, the trucking guru. Boss Talk 101 is where we finna get an exclusive about my thoughts and my opinion about Kiara, the trucking guru. Yeah. So everyone who's had something to say about this young lady, every single one of them, she's taking care of every single one of them. Wow. Every single one of them has laid on her flow at her house. She's paid for flights. She's paid for rooms. She's paid for meals. She's paid for all this out of her pocket. All these individuals who got something so negative to say about her. Also, this how it starts out. Right now, they gonna approach her. I just wanna get in. I just wanna learn about the dispatch, you know. Cool. She'll assist you. She bring you in to where you can do a little dispatching. Once she lets you in, now you starting to see other areas and other things in her operation that she got that she has going on. So now you feel like you supposed to you entitled to get even more. Now you want more. Now you want to do more. Now you seeing that she make an extra three hundred over her and she makes some extras over her. So you feel like you supposed to have the same thing. That's not the case. Kiara's been in the trucking industry for twenty years. It's impossible for you to think you gonna do in one year what done took her twenty years. She has relationships. She has connections that you don't obviously have. So when it concerns Kiara and, and and what I've heard about, I was disappointed more about the fact of the individuals that it was coming from, cause she's helped these people. You know what I'm saying? So she she basically is a uh, she. Get, let me get this straight. She owns she owns a business that employees a lot of. Uh, um, she employ a lot of truckers and and people who work in the trucking industry. Do she buy trucks? Explain so, it to so me. So she owns trucking. She owns trucks. She started out dispatching trucks. She had a dispatch service. She has it to where individuals she teach you how to dispatch. Wow. And people think dispatching is a scam. There is no scam. If you book this load, you get ten percent of this load that you book. Where is the scam in that? Wow. I have a program and I tell people just because you take my program if you don't receive my results that don't mean I'm a scam because I don't know if you're willing to do the work that I'm going to do. I'm going to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. That's real. I'm going to go to New York. I'm going to go to Chicago, Tennessee. I'm going to do all those things. I'm going to do whatever that's needed to be done versus you. Man, I ain't going way to no Tennessee, bro. Man, this weekend I'm trying to go to the Lil Flip concert or the or the Juvenile concert this weekend. Bruce is gonna be saying the hell with the concert. I'm going to go do the load. Why did they? Why did? Why did they come so hard for her on the internet like that? Why did they? What happened? Well, one of the biggest reasons that they that they come for her like that because you know she has an exotic lifestyle. So individuals see 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 you with that type of lifestyle. They see the way you're living. And so obviously they got to find some way to come knock you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying she's perfect, that she's made no mistakes. But I can tell you, these same very people that, that, that got so much negative to say about her, they still eating off of her right now. Wow. The skill that they using to get money from, they got it from her. Wow, man, and 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 I like I said, I, I just wanted to know because I heard her name just went crazy on the internet. Well, I mean, you know, let me say this: she a black woman, you know, she from Oak Cliff, so she got an exotic mouth. You know what I'm saying? And and, and her being the way she is, it brings that type of attention to her. But as far as just wanting to say she a scam and she a fraud, I mean, if that was the case, why she got all these? Uh, she's helped thousands of people. You, you know what I'm saying? She's helped thousands of people. You know, I see people talking about, well, she got kicked out of her mansion. Well, you want the woman to keep paying for something that these people ain't gave her? It's certain things that's supposed to come with this house, and they ain't did it, and they not doing You want her to keep paying it. No, she up, got her shit left, and guess where she at right now? Where she at? In another big, bad-ass mansion. So she can't be too broke. The woman riding around in Phantoms and, and, and Maybachs and Rolls Royces, and right now she's in a big old mansion overlooking the lake right now. So while we're so concerned with what she don't got and what she done lost, let's also focus on what she got right now. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah, and she still got trucks moving. She still in a mansion. She still travel the world. I mean, you sitting on the internet talking down there, hey, her life ain't stopping. That's real. I I, I get it, man. Like uh, the one thing you 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 would definitely see how they basically you know on this internet, it's a thing where they always. They come for you. Have anybody came for you and your reform movement? Let's talk. About oh that. yeah, let's talk about that. Um, like, and how do you, how do you, keep being so resilient, bouncing uh -huh. back, uh, tenacious? You know what I mean. Keep being so at it. What? How do you? How do you find that strength? Man, if you hating, I'm popping. That's real. Stay hating. Boy, I just survived 14 calendar years of the jungle. Do you hear me? I got all my teeth. I got my mentality. I got my heart, my pride, my manhood. It's nothing going on in society that's going to sidetrack me like that. So I've had different good dudes hating. No, he's a fraud. He's fake. Yo, this, man, I had one dude. I think he was in Atlanta. He was saying. I um, remember that. You remember that? Yes, I do. The dude going off. Man, this man say that. Uh, I think he tried to get on my show, too. Yeah, listen. To out, to, to, to out you. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Let me, but this how you how you heard him. He say that Brewster, uh, I work in the rail yards. I work out here in these rail yards. These containers ain't moving. You correct. I don't get containers from no rail yards. Wow. I work at the ports. I work at the ports. The rates and the numbers they down. I believe you. I don't get containers from the port, sir. I've never been inside of a port. So when I'm listening to the to the information that you present to me, I know you're bullshit because I'm listening to what you're saying. I don't even move containers in them areas, sir. Kedrian Brewster moves empty containers with a tilt bed trailer. I specialize in a tilt bed. The tilt bed is what's the is the special niche. This is the reason why they're gonna give me the bag. Cause I can load and unload myself. So when I'm hearing these accusations from these clowns, I'm kind of like, man, it's impossible for you to know me. Wow. Man, it's impossible for you to know me. All your information, it, it don't even, it's not even accurate, not even close. Bro, you said I get containers out of rail yards and depots. Excuse me, rail yards and ports. I've never been to a port, never been to a rail yard. Never. Brewster Logistics, everyone that's in my program, they have never been inside of a port or a rail yard. Wow, man, it's crazy how, and, and that's that's the, that's that's the part of the internet where people, you know, it's trolling on a whole other level. Hey, but I'm gonna show you something, man. I'm super successful, man. That's real. I look good. Come I'm on, having a wonderful life, man. You supposed to be sitting over there trying to find some flaw in my game. That's real. While you study chasing to find that fault, I'm gonna be study chasing to get live. <laughs> <laughs> While you study hating, I'm study trying to figure it out. That's it, man. I want to ask you a couple more questions before I get y'all off here. Um, one, one Meek Mills, uh -huh. uh, and he going through a lot right now. He is? As far as uh, people coming for him about uh, the gay accusations uh -huh. of P. Diddy. But he also uh, had some good news a few months back about reform. Okay. About, you know, prison reform mm -hmm. and doing some stuff with what he had faced and changing some rules and some regulations and laws with the people he ain't with. Mm -hmm. Like... What does this taunt what he's doing or 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 do you think do you see him making it through this just fine? Uh he's gonna make it through just fine. Um the work that they doing up there with the reform that they have going, that can't be denied. This man is getting laws changed. This man is getting people that's on probation and locked up for you know, a bike or some bullshit. He getting these people out. Like, man, you can't discredit the work that him and his team is putting forth. As far as the accusations with him did it, I could care less what the man got going on in his personal life. You know what I'm saying? I don't even you know, focus on things. I don't need entertain all that. You know what I'm saying? That's not my business. But as far as the reform and what they got going on upstate, man, they are most definitely bringing about impact up there. Is there any more artists that you've been working with lately? Uh, you know, as far as reform, anybody else reach out to, you know, try to, you know, try I will to help? say this. Uh, I give a shout out to Yellow Beezy. Yellow Beezy tried to rock out with you. Oh uh, well, me and Yellow gonna rock out, man. Um, we had an opportunity to go down to the juvenile. You know, in the juveniles, they send us them boys to like boot camp, placement centers, and stuff like that. So I'm gonna take uh Lady J, Yellow Beezy. He gonna go up in there, use his platform and his influence to rock the youth. That's so hard. um, I really that was I I I respected it because that's one of the first artists up out my city, you know what I'm saying? That's using his platform 
to push the reform agenda. You know, I get love from all over the country. Yeah. But it's a different type of... When you of, get it at home. When you get it at home. You know what I'm saying? I've always been a Yellow fan, man. Always. Yeah, always I always rock with him. Uh, uh, I, 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 great, great artist as far as the way that he his music was for me. Uh -huh. for, and, his, and, and the timing when he was doing his movement, when he had the song with... Uh, Migos, Gucci Man, and all that other stuff. Uh, but even before that, when he was trapping designer, uh -huh. so to see you link with him and in the inner city get to see that, right? I think it's gonna be big for him as well as you, right? Not just you, but him as well, because I think a lot of times people want to see that side of him, you know, because in in the city, you know, they expect a lot. Bro. Yeah, man. Uh, like I say, man, this this will be my first time working with Yellow, but like. I just thought it was cool that I'm like, damn, homie gonna use this platform to rock the youth. You know, that's what it's about for me, man. I, I got my own money. I got my own platform. Come I on, do man. my own thing. Kill so I don't game. Yeah, I don't necessarily need you for nothing like that. What I need you for is I want you to use your platform to show the little homies, hey, man, you can be successful like this, bro. That's hard. You, you ain't necessarily got to rob nobody. You ain't got to sell no dope. You can go make a song. You can go drive a truck. You can go cut some hair. You can go be a comedian. I remember talking to Bubba Dub in my yard, and I was telling bro, like, damn, that's crazy how, you know, we able to monetize ourselves, you know what I'm saying, yeah, right yeah. now. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. It's crazy. Like, anything that you doing, you can just monetize it. That's real. You know what I'm saying? So, no, I just talking to you about the food. Yeah, we, <laughs> have, we, we have so many different lanes and avenues to produce income that we don't have to go do nothing crazy that's going to risk our freedom and our lives. You hear me? The old heads, they lied to us. Yeah. They got the, we got to stop giving the little homies bad game. That's hard. They, they got the little homies thinking that they got to do X, Y, and Z to be successful. You is not the big homie. You don't even have a job. Man, but you know, you have a brand now, and it's something different. You know what I mean? Your brand is everything that you embody, you know, right. as far as the way you move. The truck, and the, that, that's a part of the reform. All that stuff is wrapped in a bow, and that's that's Boss Man Brewster. Yes, and sir. that's pretty much what's, what's rolling the whole ball. So you definitely have made a mark in the game, bro. That's and a and good thank time. you so much, bro. Man, I, I appreciate you, because I'm I letting you go. about these books, too. Hold on, I got a question. So what's the definition of a big homie, anyway? Because I know you were oh, saying Oh, that's that. an elder statesman. That's someone that can give guidance. That's someone that can give information. That's someone that can prevent you from making the mistakes that they've already made. That's someone that can set you in a different tra 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 trajectory within your life. That's the big homie. Okay. If you somebody who can't do me, you all you can do is tell me, hey, go rob them. Hit this lick. Sell this dough. Do this. Do that. Use the clown. I mean, you is not the big homie. You is not the big homie if you're not even the big homie of your own kids. Your own kids don't even look up to you and respect you. You ain't got no job. You ain't got no car. You ain't even got your own crib. How is you the big homie? All you did was shoot somebody back in 9-3. Damn. And is big homie and Come OG on. the same thing? It's the same thing. Just different terminologies because okay. of the, the uh, generations or whatnot. But but they do. I have relinquished them their rights to be called big homie. Brewster is the big homie. Big, re big reform is the big homie. That's, that's what we doing. Big reform is the big homie. I have relinquished you guys the rights to be talking about your big homie. You is not big homie. You ain't got no job, bro. Damn. Man, let's talk about the books, man. Oh, I'm sorry. Big homie has been relinquished, Yeah, they've been relinquished they've been relinquished, relinquished rights, man. man. Let's talk about these books, man. You got three different books and you brought them for us? Yeah, this this for the boss talk, man. Man, what the boss is talk. This is what the boss is talk, so I wanted y'all to see the game that's man. being put into the system. So you see this here? This is from the rec yard to the streets. Wow. This is a book that is very connected to our penal institution. You go inside of a prison facility, they're gonna be handing you this book right here. You take changes to get out of prison, you will be receiving this book right here. Now, if you notice, you see how I didn't write no three, 400 page book? That's what I was noticing when you had them there. I'm like, it ain't no big book, so it shouldn't be discouraging to nobody there to pick you up go. and read. It was the reason why I wrote the book like this. I wrote it like this because I wrote it like an album like a little Netflix movie. I don't want you to see a book and be so intimidated that you don't even want to read it. Mm -hmm. I want you to see something like this. Oh, that ain't nothing. Let me read it. But when you read it, it's that dope. Yeah, it's good dope. Good dope. Straight drop. Straight drop. Straight drop. You hear me? Good dope. That's what this is right here. I, I intentionally wrote it like this because I want you to see it and say, oh, that ain't shit. I can read that. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, by the time you get through with this, you're going to be thinking about your life. 
Wow. So that's book one. Book one. From the Rick Yard. Let me see that. You from the to Rick Yard. Me too now. And you know we have to sign it. And that's the first one you recommend anybody to read was that one first. That's the very first book that I would recommend an individual that's coming home from prison, an individual that's in the streets, or an individual that's looking for a new way, a new look. This is most definitely the book that needs to be read. For wow. them people, for them kids in the streets who don't need to go to the Rick Yard. This is the book that needs to be read. Wow. Now we got another book, From the Streets to the Suites. Okay. This is part two. From the Streets to the Suites is the elevation. This is where the business took place. This is how I made my first million dollars. Wow. This is also how I was able to start traveling. This is where the evolution took place at. This is also the very first time I ever walked away from millions of dollars. Wow. Who's that on the front? That's, That's Kedrian him. Brewster. That's him. I was about to say it. Hair done grow. Hair done grow. That's gross. why I'm like, he look different. <laughs> And clean though. Yes. I know. I'm talking about got the suit <laughs> suited and booted. I see. So as I stated earlier, man, you know, people think going from the streets to the suites is about money. And I have to tell people, man, it ain't about money with me. It's about experiences. When I was in that prison for them uh, 14 years, I used to sit in there and dream of experiences. I never dreamed of money. Man. The whole time I was in prison, I never, never dreamed, dreamed of, of money. money. Yeah. But I did dream of going to Miami and getting on the boat. I did dream of going down to Atlanta and going to go eat some good food. I did dream of going to a, a Mavericks game. and It's the experiences. So going from the streets to the suites is about experiences. This is a book that will outline that, detail that, and it'll also show the very first time I walked away from millions of dollars. Man. Hmm. Stop playing, man. This book here, and we can get them on Amazon? I swear. Stop playing. You can get these on Amazon. My guy. Boss Man Brewster's in the building. Yes, sir. Then this third book. So this is Ghazali, the jewel dropper. So this is the guy that I tell y'all, this is the conciliar to the big reform movement. While this man was incarcerated, he played a significant role in the evolution of the big reform movement. Wow. He, and the reason I tell people that is because he was able to speak to me from a mental standpoint. Wow. In order to get to a certain level of success, you have to have a mental Sound decision making, knowing when to do something, when not to do nothing. He just came home from prison. Man, he been shout home. out, shout out, shout out to the jewel dropper. He been home uh, four, five days. He been home. He's adjusting back into society. But this is somebody that you will most definitely see. Uh, you, got, you gonna get him on the show? Yeah, I'm gonna bring him up here. That's what's up. I, I'm, I'm gonna bring get him on the I'm show. Gonna, listen to me. The Jewel Dropper is the conciliar for the big reform movement. Got to get him on His book talk. is available. It's on Amazon. And I'm telling you, bro, is the juice. I got to get it him on. It says Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Treasure chest. Treasure chest. What does go Gonzalez mean? Oh, I have to ask him that. <laughs> wow. But I will say this. He has been the email on numerous of units in the state of Texas. As a matter of fact, when you take this picture with him, anytime a dude come inside of her that's been incarcerated, he gonna tell you about him. Wow, mm. that's all. He has that much respect, that much prestige amongst inmates within the Texas population in the prison facility. I'm telling you that he's that guy in real time. It's an honor and it's a privilege to even have him on my team. I got to get him on the Because he wouldn't even mess with me when I was in prison. Wow. Yeah, when I was in prison, he didn't want nothing to do with me. He wouldn't even say, hi, bye, what's up to me. I went and found him. When I got home and I started doing everything I was doing, I reached back out to him. He didn't even respond. I had to send my partners to go jam him up. Like, hey, man, bro, trying to holler at you. Wow. Yeah, you going to enjoy wow. it, man. Beautiful, brother. Beautiful. I want to ask you one more question before I get you out of here, man. I know, Kiki, you that's your your number one, your, your best rapper alive. Ain't nothing touching him. Okay, and I had asked a question up in, in uh, Chicago a lot of people in the barbershop, a lot of people got mad at me about this. Uh, I told them that <laughs> if Eminem go in that booth with Kiki, he going to have a problem. And people try to get at me about this. Yeah, tell him, to, tell him he ain't talking about nothing down <laughs> south. In the state of Texas, we talking about Don Key, man. Make sure you let them know that when you get back to where you're going, you come down south and we talking about the Don. Period. Period. Point blank. Ain't nothing messing with him. Ah, that's all I need. I heard, I heard they call him the Jay Z of the South. I swear, <laughs> I swear. Hey man, can't stand the rain. It's coming too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Show you. Yeah, check, the reason I, I, I love Key the way I do, his music is conscious. Go listen to it. He gonna give you some game. Gonna go he, gonna, he gonna show you how to go pick baby up and, and ride through the side with the top back looking good, feeling good, go get something to eat, some real player. Mm. And show you how to get some money. And show you how to deal with them haters. Just listen to the music, man. The music is so conscious, man. Man, hey, man. Shout out to Kiki, man. He just left. You was here when he was here. I seen Stop him up playing. here talking that man, talk. Man, I had a great time in and I'm having a great time now, man. Uh, let us know how we can get a hold of your boss, man. Boss man Brewster on all platforms. If you're looking for me, I'm not hard to find either. I'm very easy. And don't let these people scam you. If it ain't got that blue check, it ain't me. Man, stop playing, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's all love, We love man. you, bro. Yes, sir. It's been another great segment, but hey, make sure you guys get down here, right here, and look at this next clip. It's about to be crazy. Every subject been on point, so I know you're going to love this next clip. Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss.